On this week's episode of Inside Iowa, catch up with former Hawkeye Dave Zolo. See what it takes to become a conductor. Learn more about the university's first gender neutral bathroom. Go tailgating and get the recipe for some delicious pull apart bread. And discover what centering pregnancy is all about. Inside Iowa starts now. Hey everyone, welcome to Inside Iowa, your premier destination to stay in touch with all things Iowa. From students, to alumni, to what's happening on campus, I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. Every week we'll catch you up on the stories that are happening in and around the university and how Iowa is making an impact on the students, community, and the state. And we'll start out by catching up with former Hawkeye, Dave Zolo, who's a local legend in the Midwest. He's a root singer and songwriter who got his start right here on campus. And he's done just about everything you can do in the music industry, from writing and performing to producing and running his own label. These days, he's most comfortable on stage. Throughout the years, he's had his ups and downs, but he keeps doing what he loves and never lets anything keep him down. You can follow this honky tonker <laughs> and his current band, The Body Electric, traveling around Iowa, the Midwest, and even overseas. And he credits much of his success to his experiences here as a student. Oh, it's full of tension. Hey, Dave Zolo is a root singer-songwriter whose passion for performing has taken him around the world in order to share his music with others. He grew up in Iowa City and began playing the piano at the age of five with the Prussell School of Music and studied there until age 17. I quit playing the piano for the most part uh, while I was in college. And then my last year of college, um, I uh, I'd started playing piano again, and I broke up uh, with my girlfriend, wrote a bunch of songs, uh, and started playing and formed a band and, and started making a living and been at it ever since. Zolo attended the University of Iowa to major in American Studies. He had a strong interest in writing and was working on a biography of his grandfather while at school, who was a jazz musician. Zolo's interest in writing and background in piano combined to create a serious gift for songwriting, which he soon began to share with others. In a cold, cold feeling, when you lay down. During his senior year, Zolo and a few friends, three from the University of Iowa, started a band called High and Lonesome. The band quickly garnered a lot of fans in the area, which expanded to the Midwest and eventually overseas. However, High and Lonesome never signed to a label. Well, there just was nothing, you know, there's no industry here in Iowa. There's no record industry. Um, there was some interest in High and Lonesome, um, some major label interest, but I wasn't really interested in, in going that route. Um, I didn't have the, op we didn't really have the opportunity. In, in 94, a couple of years into my career, they discovered some tumors in my, in my larynx, in my vocal cords, essentially. And so I needed to have reconstructive surgery on my larynx and it, it actually ended up taking a long time to, to heal. I mean I continued playing and singing but it wasn't the same, um, you know, it really took close to a decade to get my voice fully back I would say. Even with tumors, Zolo could not stop performing. He played piano in Nashville with singer-songwriter Todd Snyder for a year only to return to his home in Iowa City. Now he performs around 200 days a year, whether it's solo or with his current band, The Body Electric. He has performed all over the United States and Europe, and as he puts it, wherever he needs to go. Iowa City is a unique town in that, you know, it's, it's not an unusual thing or it's not considered bad form to, to want to be an artist of some kind, you know. Um, my dad went to the Writers' Workshop, which is what brought my family to Iowa. Um, my mom's dad was a musician. So the idea of being, you know, 
um, an, a touring independent musician, which a lot of parents, you know, would not be very supportive of, uh, or a lot of communities would not be very supportive of. Um, I, I was very fortunate to have parents that, you know, that um, encouraged me and, and a community which, um, you know, has always uh, embraced me and, done, and, and been really nurturing in a lot of ways. What some people would see as a, as a, as a drawback to this community, I see as a plus, which is you're, you're outside the industry and therefore you're free from, you know, the ways in which the music industry would want to shape the work that you do. After his tumors were discovered, Zolo established a record company, which he named Trailer Records. Trailer Records signed many successful bands, including Brother Trucker, BJ Fleming, Joe Price, Greg Brown, and The Pines. When Zolo's vocal cords were healed in 2005, he closed the doors to Trailer Records and committed himself fully to performing again. You know, I, really, I consider myself, I mean, I, there have been periods where I've done a lot of producing, um, but really, uh, mostly, most of my career has been, uh, you know, doing my, either playing with my own band or, or as a solo act, and um, I would say, for me, the thing that I would judge my experiences by is, is, is fun and, uh, and, you know, the people that, that I've met and that I've, I've connected with, so... Those are the things that, that are, are most meaningful to me. And then the work itself, obviously, it's the music is the most, is the most important thing. Because many members of his first band attended Iowa, Zolo still holds a special place in his heart for the university. Um, you know, I had looked at other schools um, and, uh, and came to the University of Iowa, uh, which just made sense um, in, in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, who knows in what ways my life would have been different. I can't even speculate at this point. Um, but, uh, but I have no doubt that, you know, that having gone to the University of Iowa and having lived in, in Iowa City, um, those, are, those are big reasons that I do what I do and I am who I am. As he has been performing for almost 20 years now, Zolo has a real sense of what being a musician is all about. I think as a musician and as a, a person, having, you know, listening is really what's at the heart of what we do. If, 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 if you want to have a musical experience that's, that's fulfilling and that, um, that really uh, strives to achieve, I think, what, what art can achieve or, or what music can achieve. So, you know, always listening and always, you know, keeping your ears open and, um, I mean, but I would, I would, that would be my advice to uh, an octogenarian, too, I mean, to anybody. Considering his success, some may find it strange that he lives in Iowa City, but as the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. If relatively quiet Iowa City is the village, there couldn't be a better poster child to represent its culture. When we return, check out what it takes to lead an orchestra. And see why the University of Iowa added a gender-neutral bathroom on campus. Inside Iowa, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Coach Bluter, and I'm here to tell you it's game on. The Hawkeyes are ready for the season, and we hope you're ready to join us. Order your Iowa women's basketball season tickets today. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com.
Performing Iowa, the University of Iowa's finest in music, dance, and theater performances. Go behind the curtain and see why the University of Iowa is a hub for artistic expression and creative production. Performing Iowa, each week only on the Hawkeye Network. Show your Iowa pride, the Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. The University of Iowa offers masters and doctorates in conducting, which is part of the School of Music. Aspiring conductors get a hands-on approach and are able to conduct entire performances, pick their musicians, and wow their audience. The University of Iowa School of Music is one of the top programs in the country and has an international reputation. The conductors in our next video work together to create a chamber winds orchestra, and they share what conducting is all about. Why did I become a conductor? Wow, I just really loved conducting. I loved working with people. Really liked the interaction and, and the growth that, that we could make as a group together when I was conducting. I mean, we, we do this for the music and, and these are wonderful pieces that deserve our attention. So we love the music, uh, but also education. I mean, education is, is the silver bullet, so to speak, um, in music. And I think just connecting with so many people is, is really one of the great joys of music making is that uh, it's not just a self-serving thing anymore, it's something where uh, as a collective group we all are making music and to kind of help shape that is, is really uh, an inspiring thing. Not only is this an incredible music school but it has um, a staff and really really cared on a personal level. It's your best conducting ever that I've seen. That was Dr. Heidel, so he is my conducting um, professor, my teacher, and the person I've been working with here at the University of Iowa for the past two years doing my DMA in conducting. And you know, when you have your teacher say things like that, I and mean, this is your best conducting I've seen you do, that means a lot to me because you know, today was my, my final recital and I, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling, I'm happy inside, and it's a really good performance, so I'm really happy about it. This has been absolutely the right choice. Music is an ever-evolving art, and especially in a concert like this where it's not just one conductor, it's multiple conductors, we have to really put our heads together to find out what's going to be a good balance. So, so you would sift through you know, tens and, and hundreds of pieces you know, and, 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 and looking for those perfect pieces to mix and match for the concert program. Now new music is being written for chamber music as you might have heard in the saxophone ensemble. It's fairly recent and also very exciting so it's not just for uh, just, just for intimate settings anymore. It actually has a, a much more artistic value to it. It lends itself really well to have some nice contrasting works in a concert like this. Now they performed extraordinarily well. I, I couldn't have asked for a better performance. After graduating, careers in the field include band, choral, and orchestral conducting. And I bet those students always conduct themselves in a professional manner. See what I did there? <laughs> I thought I was the one who had all the jokes on this show, but I guess not. Well done, Lauren. The Iowa <laughs> Memorial Union became the first building on campus to designate a bathroom as gender neutral. The family bathroom on the third floor has been renamed in an effort to be more inclusive to students who may feel uncomfortable using a gender-specific bathroom. The next time you find yourself answering nature's call in the Iowa Memorial Union, you might see an unfamiliar sign. On the third floor of the IMU lies the University of Iowa's first gender-neutral bathroom, a project spearheaded by Associate Director of IMU Administration and Operations, Patricia Cruz. Gender-neutral would be that anyone who identifies themselves as male, female, or other 
would be welcome in that restroom. I had several groups that were booking events here in the building that specifically asked for a bathroom to be labeled as gender neutral. Anyone who is seeking out a gender neutral restroom is is able to find that without assistance, without having to call themselves out as being different. Though the change was implemented only a few months ago, Cruz has already received feedback. They've been very positive. People are, are happy to see that the university campus is willing to label a restroom as gender neutral um, and make the environment as welcoming as possible to all individuals, uh, which is our goal. I mean, we can't judge people by their, I mean, the street or, or, or like, or, or homosexual. I mean, everyone's have a, have a same rights to equal to use the bathroom. And I think that's a brilliant idea. Other projects are in development, so the university's welcoming vibe can continue to grow. One that I know of is on the admissions form. Uh, instead of checking just a male or a female box, there is the ability to check other, which is new, and I think f that is maybe forward uh, for a university. I think we're one of the first to have that as an option. And for companies or other universities considering designating gender-neutral bathrooms? I'd say that you never really know what a person identifies as. It's an important thing that a person feel welcome in whatever environment that they are, especially in an environment where they work, where they're, they're being educated, they spend a lot of their day. Regardless of how they identify with the, their, their sexuality, their sex itself, and so we've seen that there is a positive response to that. Coming up after the break, we'll see what's cooking in Kinnick's Kitchen. And see how the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics is changing prenatal care. Inside Iowa, we'll return. The Hawkeyes are rising. After a trip to the NIT championship game last season, the Iowa men's basketball team will be heating things up on the court once again. And you can help get Carter rocking. Here's going to break out and look out the ball. Showtime. Order your season tickets today. Don't miss a minute of the action. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. May. When Basabi has been very active on the offensive glass. And there it is. Devin Marble with that score joins his Dan Roy in the Thousand Point Club here in Iowa. The first father-son duo in Big Ten history to accomplish that feat. He just made history. Father and son each in the same exclusive club in Iowa basketball history. For more than 100 years, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa, and now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV. DITV, your news, sports, and weather source for the University of Iowa and is produced by University of Iowa students and presented by the Hawkeye Network. There are over 24,000 bridges in Iowa. But only one connects University of Iowa hospitals and clinics to Iowa River Landing. From pediatrics and women's health to cardiology and routine exams, world-class medical care can be found at a new convenient location in Coralville. Iowa River Landing is here, and it's designed just for you. For an appointment, call 319-467-2000. Welcome back. This season, we've seen a lot of great recipes at the games with our tailgating segment, Kinnick's Kitchen, and this week is no different. Let's meet Beth and her sweet and sticky pull-apart bread. It's a perfect dish to bring out on those early games, and it's tasty too. Grab a pen and some paper because Beth gives us the ingredients and the cooking instructions for this perfect game day pastry. We are here with Beth, who has a delicious looking pull apart cake. So Beth, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. So tell me a little bit about what you brought, and uh, tell me why do you bring this out of tailgate? Well, I brought this pull apart cake. Uh-huh. What made you want to bring this out this morning? 
Well, because we're going to do a morning uh, tailgate uh -huh. rather than lunch, you know. So we, we just bought kind of breakfast items as well. Okay. And so it looks like something that's great because you can pull it apart with your fingers and walk around and visit still. It's sticky. Oh, that's okay. The messier sticky the better, though, right? Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about, uh, is this easy to make? Is it hard to make? How, how do you make the pull apart bread? Very, very easy. You take the rolls, rolls dough, uh -huh. rolls, the rolls, and you take a bun pan, and you grease your bun pan real okay. good, and then you put 18 of the rolls dough, the rolls, in the bottom of the bun pan, and then you take a box of cooked butterscotch pudding. It has to be the cooked version. Okay. And you dribble that all over the top of that, uh -huh. and then you take a half a cup of, of the brown sugar, a little vanilla, half a cup of butter. Okay. Okay. And you melt all that together with cinnamon, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh -huh. And you melt all that together and you pour that mm -hmm. over the top of that. Okay. Then you cover it and you let it sit overnight. Okay. You shove it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Uh -huh. You got your full of butter. Now, what is this bread like? Is it, is it like a, a breakfast pastry bread? Is it sweet? Well, it's just the rose dough. Yeah. It's just the rose. I think, you know, it's, it's like if you're going to make rolls, uh -huh. that's, that's, that's what the basic dough recipe is. It's just, it's just the rose dough. It's in the roll form, uh -huh. like you were going to make rolls. They are about that big, and you just drop them in the bottom. 18 of them. Uh -huh. Mind if I try one? You sure can. No. Do you want butter? No, I think it's good the good way it is right here. Let's look at them. Oh, you got that butter on it. What they say so. Well, sure, you guys say I do. Who might have once turned that butter? I don't know. I would. I used to live not too far from Paula Dean. I'm not afraid of butter. Oh, what's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is the pull apart bread. You tell how delicious this looks. I can't wait to eat this. Mm. I gotta tell you. It's sweet. Doughy. Doughy. It's a perfect breakfast food. So I hope you're writing down a recipe. Because when you're going on your next tailgate, I'll have to make one of these. That does look good. I think that's something I can handle making in the kitchen. Well, if you do, let me know because I'm going to have to join you next game day. <laughs> Coming up next, learn more about centering pregnancy. And how it can benefit expecting mothers. Inside Iowa, we'll be right back. Tradition. Mm -hmm. Ambition. Exploration. Inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history. And excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a Hawkeye. We have a certain way of doing things. You'll see it in the determination of our students, in the classroom and on our fields, in the collaboration among our faculty that lead to great innovation and change, in the vision of our writers, artists, and doctors. Bringing the world to Iowa and Iowa to the world. It's the Hawkeye Way. Kick back and relax as Java Blend takes you from your home right into the Java House in downtown Iowa City. Experience local and national talent perform for a live audience featuring musical groups from all over the country. Java Blend puts you in the front row of each performance. Java Blend is presented by Iowa Public Radio and the Hawkeye Network. and the Hawks do it. Hartley sprinting back. Into the, it's caught, it's in, the Cook. five, yes, a touchdown. touchdown. I can't believe it. A touchdown to Marv Cook. Holy cow. Can't believe it. Six seconds to go. Hartley to Cook, and the Hawks have the lead. There are a lot of options for expecting mothers when it comes to prenatal care, and UI Healthcare is also offering Centering Pregnancy, which is a group model for prenatal care. Expecting moms meet in a group setting, led by a healthcare professional such as a doctor or midwife, and group meetings include health assessments, education, and offer a nurturing, supportive environment.
Centering Pregnancy is a group model for prenatal care. It incorporates aspects of traditional prenatal care, but also expands that to where women who are expecting babies get together in a group setting to go over questions and concerns and gather knowledge in a more informal setting. They come in for two hour long sessions and all of the same clinical components that take place during an individual prenatal visit are still covered. They take their own blood pressure, their own weight, they record this in their own notebooks. There's a little private space in the room and they still have their belly checks where we measure their uterus and listen to the baby's heartbeat just as we would in an individual appointment. But the remainder of the time is spent with the group. And there's an educational topic that we cover in each session. It's not so much like a class, it's not me giving the information. Um, it's fun, <laughs> it's a group activity, uh, a lot of what happens in the group is really um, dictated by the concerns of the individual women in that group. The benefits of centering are many. Women get a lot more time thinking about their pregnancy. A lot of times partners come to the groups and can be more involved in the pregnancy, get more excited about the pregnancy. And we do know from many research studies that centering pregnancy actually decreases premature birth. Women tend to be healthier because they know what to do in pregnancy and what things to avoid. And there's also the social support aspect. It's an immediate support group for women who are all sharing this similar experience. I did feel like Centering Pregnancy prepared me for labor, birth, and parenting. Um, we had the opportunity to talk quite a bit about the labor process, what it would be like when labor started, and how I might feel as labor progressed. And we also got to talk quite a bit about parenting, which is nice because I think sometimes in a traditional model, that's something that might not be covered as in depth as we got to talk about it in Centering Pregnancy. I felt like we got to kind of draw on the knowledge and experience of those in the group. So it was really, it was really nice. One of the reasons that I love Centering Pregnancy and I recommend it is that pregnancy is really a fantastic common denominator. Everybody has very similar concerns when they're pregnant. So they really benefit from one another um, more than just getting that information directly from me. For women who aren't sure if Centering is really their thing, I would say try it, see if you like it, bring your partner, see if you like what you see there. You can go and you can share as little or as much as you want about your personal history, about your personality, uh, but I think it's definitely worth a visit. Well, that does it for this week's episode where you got a first-hand look at what makes the university students faculty, and alumni so special. Stop back next week to learn more about your university and how it's making a difference. For Inside Iowa, I'm Laura Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. See, See you next week. week.